electrostatic potential map of tetrachloromethane. The atoms of which the tetrachloromethane consists of does not have the same electronegativities. Chlorine has a higher electronegativity than the carbon and thus more electron density will be around the chlorines. Electron rich areas are red and electron poor areas are blue. Electrostatic potential map of tetrachloromethane. Electron rich areas are red and electron poor areas are blue. Use the X-ray function to see the molecule inside the electrostatic potential map. Notice that the green chlorine atoms are on the red side of the electrostatic potential map. Notice that the gray carbon atoms are on the blue sides of the electrostatic potential map. This is because chlorine is more electron negative than carbon. Notice the symmetry of the colors and the bond dipole moments. There is a zero net dipole since the four bond dipoles are identical, in a tetrahedral arrangement and thus cancels each other. If they were in a square planar arrangement, they would have cancelled as well leading to a zero net dipole moment. The molecule is thus non-polar. The gray bond dipole directions are from the carbon atom with a lower electron negativity to the chlorine atoms with a higher electron negativity. So it goes from a area with less electron density to an area with higher electron density. When the four bond dipole directions are combined, the net dipole moment of the molecule is obtained. Notice the symmetry of the colors and the bond dipole moments. There is a zero net dipole since the four bond dipoles are identical, in a tetrahedral arrangement and thus cancels each other. If they were in a square planar arrangement, they would have cancelled as well leading to a zero net dipole moment. The molecule is thus nonpolar. I want to clear up the confusion that often happens between whether we are talking about the molecule or are we talking about the bond. So over here, this molecule, tetrachloromethane, is nonpolar, but each bond between now the carbon and the chlorine is a polar covalent bond. So if we look at the individual bond, we say it's a polar covalent bond. So because that chlorine is more electronegative than the carbon, there's more electron richness around the chlorine. So the electron richness are shown by the red and the electron poorness are shown about about the blue. So you can see it's more rich, electron rich around the chlorine and more electron poor around the carbon. So the bond between the carbon and the chlorine is polar covalent. But now if we look at the dipole moments of each bond, you can see there's one in this direction, there's one in that direction, there's one in this direction, and there's one in that direction. So the dipole moments of each bond is present and they are cancelling each other, leading to the molecule to be nonpolar. So just to summarize, the molecule is nonpolar and each bond between the carbon and the chlorine is polar covalent.